Look on the bright side. I've been in some dust houses. Things can only get better. I'm sure this gaff singer recommended will suit us. What's his name? Claridge's. Oh, yeah. Yep. Bar, cars on every floor, and the owner's missus does all the cooking herself. Sounds great. What's with the new whistle and flute, Sarge? <laughs> well, but we never ask. Showing the flag, Willis. Always dressed to suit the occasion. I'm sure our superiors will be very receptive. Yeah? Reckon we'll get a commendation? Oh, yeah, definitely. No doubt about that. Oh, we showed them, didn't we, eh? We showed these provincials some Met style thief taking. Just like last time. Oh, you'll get to like it here. Lots of northern beer to make you drunk. Lots of airy girls with big arises. That's your interest catered for. I wanted to go in the vice squad. You stick with me, Derek. You're far too good a lad to be poking your nose in keyholes. Willis! I had a word with the super. It was the yard have agreed for Willis to stay on. Why wasn't I told you he was a copper, sir? Oh, sometimes it's easier to remain in ignorance. What difference would it have made if I'd known that he was working undercover? Oh, none, possibly. Willis was told by the yard not to blow his cover until the job was finished. He obeyed orders. Seems a likely lad to me. He's all right. Are we sending in exchange? Jeff Sadler. Fair swap, yes? Jeff's not too bad, sir. You can find him mucking a pigsty. Who'd post a good detective? Christ knows they come for you enough. Ah, which brings me to Bullman. What are we going to do with him? Oh, unknown faces are always useful. He's had some good results. Have you read his conduct sheet? Harassment, insubordination, intrusion into grief, false arrest, cooking evidence. I reckon he's been sent up here to give his governor's house for a rest. <laughs> oh, wheel him in. Hell, fire. Sergeant Bullman, sir. Oh, thank you, David. I'm Chief Inspector Rainbow. Welcome to G Division. Very pleased to be here, sir. Superintendent Sims would have liked to have seen you himself. He's out of town today. Oh, perfect day for a round of golf, sir. A regional police conference in Leeds, actually. Oh, thanks, sir. You had a baptism by fire, Sergeant. Oh, did our best, sir. Nice surprise to see an old oppo of mine on the same case. Well, I've been through your file, and I'll be candid with you. You're not the type of officer we normally try for on this division. No, sir. Poor educational record. I am studying for an open university degree, sir. Oh, we have three law degrees on the department. Perhaps one of the others might help you. Thank you very much. We've got a monthly essay competition. I'd like you to have a stab at that. The subject is Tractus de Legibus et Consuetudinibus Angliae, or Bracton's Treatise. Have you heard of it? Yes, I have, as a matter of fact. Crown and flower of English medieval law, Bullman. If you say so, sir. Knowledge, that's the modern policeman's weapon. This brings me to your record. Got a reputation for heavy hunting. That's out. No chai ikes, no bouncing. My lads play it by the book, or I'm on them like the wrath of God. Yes, sir. We have a red-hot watch committee. That's the way I like it. We carry a clean sheet. With respect, sir, my name is not Genghis Khan, sir. I'm simply a detective supported here to try to do you a good job. Yeah, that's all right, Sergeant. Well, presumably David Singer has filled you in on the on the routine. Yes, sir. Anything you'd like to ask me? Oh, yes, sir. What? Yes? Willis? No, he's to be paid up here. Make the necessary arrangements. No, I don't know his number. I'll look it up. Don't hang up. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, just what have you in mind for me, sir? I mean, after my success in the Paradise case, you'll want to earmark me for something special. Use my know-how, my specialised skills. What? My undercover specialised skills, sir. Well, Willis displayed a number of uh, undercover skills, Sergeant. He also incited the criminals to a crime. You disobeyed orders. We used to be a team, sir. On this occasion, he did the donkey work. Why keep a dog unless you let it bark occasionally? 
Yes, well, perhaps you can employ your special skills on the general duty roster for a while with Willis. See if you can keep your nose clean. Play it according to the rules for once. Willis's number, ZY. Before you arrive, the put me with a lad called Jerry. Mm. You'll meet him. He's very flash. Long hair, leather jacket. Devious nerd. You know, he'd sell his own mother for a bag of chips. Now, you see, he is one of Rainbow's blue-eyed boys. He gets all the good jobs. We had quite a time. Decoy for rapist? Actually, we broke up a shoplifting ring run by a female Fagin. Do you know she had 40 kids in her books? She lifted five grand a day. She was taking orders in advance, my dear. And what was your contribution to this crime of the century, Linda? I pretended to be a market researcher in the supermarkets. Actually, it was really funny. One of the chains offered me a job. Sales promotion girl for their new brand of instant mashed potato. I mean, can you just see it? Miss Spud, 1978. Just takes a flaming ticket. What happened? Well, uh, we're back together again for a oh, while. Oh, that's all right. Great. Yeah, we're on the flaming routine roster. What do you mean? No commendations? No. No. I mean, we tracked a case that had this lot baffled for ages. We went in there using our professional expertise. What do we get for it? Flaming duty roster. Yes, well, perhaps he wants to teach you a bit of humility. Humility? Humility is for the little sisters of the poor, Miss Doran. Not police officers. The Willis and I were trained, we were trained to walk tall. I think it says we can check into the hotel and be back at two. Oh. Oh. Right. We'll be back at two, no doubt. To stand in for a set of traffic lights that are broken down. Bill, you've got to tell our Albert to stop calling our Theresa a lazy slot. Well, she is a lazy slut. She's not a lazy slut, Bill. Well, I think she's a lazy slut, and I agree with that, Albert. Come along, Wes. No, first fair. She's a dirty, lazy slut. Our Albert won't do that painting. And you know why I thought well enough, Bill? He's out on bash, morning, noon and night. He's a dirty bastard. He's married to a dirty slut, isn't he? I'm sorry, lads, we're not open yet. If it were me, I'd sling her out. No, no, get us a gin, love. Save me legs. Um, uh, my name is Bowman. Yes, Mr. Bowman, sir. I booked two rooms. No, sorry, love. We're full up, complete. Got a phone call from London this morning. Two London reps. Long stairs. Tarpet. I don't know why they have to argue so. Uh, that's us. Uh, I'm Mr. Bullman, and this is Mr. Willis. Oh, you're right, then. Yes. Yes, your residence. They can have a drink, Bill. I care for a drink, gent. Oh, that's very kind of you, Squire. Thank you very much. Oh, I'll, I'll have a gold watch, please. Uh, 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 that's a scotch, and I'll have the same. Thank you. Thank you. I'll have similar, sir. Ginny for the wife. Happy to serve you, sir. Now, my name is Bill. Okay. Madam, there is me. Okay. You're very good, Elsa. Happy stay and the best of British. Oh, cheers. 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 Now, that'll be 162 exactly. Have you noticed we don't charge these fancy cocktail bar prices here? Um, yeah, okay. And if I may say so myself, it's all right here. I can't find my purse. Breakfast, 7.30 to 9.30. Absolutely no cooking in the bedrooms. Fire risk. Hello. Room service. Hang on, Willis. Welcome to the boudoir. What a dump. 
Oh, I know. Not quite as bad as the last lot. Just gonna make yourself at home, that's all. There's some tea in the pot and a cheese banjo. My room stinks of fish and chips. Yeah, well, yours is over the kitchen. That's why I grabbed this one, cop. Yeah. That's a bed. It creaks. And there's no toilet paper in the Benghazi. Don't you carry your own? No. Oh, I wouldn't go anywhere without toilet paper. I keep it in my purse. I uh, wouldn't keep that fire on too long, Sarge. 10p lasts about 10 minutes. I'll leave it out, Willis. I'll fix the meter, won't I? Well, it's survival training, isn't it? Look, see that plaque there? That was my old man's regiment, the KRRs. Now, he knew all about survival. Yeah, well, hadn't we uh, better get back to the next, Sarge? Yes, maybe. But they can wait till I finish my lunch. Now, he knew all about survival. When he was stationed in India, I was only a lad at the time. Oh, you checked in, eh? Yeah. It's all right. Perfectly adequate little drum. Of course, he survived the black hole of Calcutta. I've told you, Willis. Now we're up here, we're expected to go native. How's your typing? All right. Start on these, divide them between you. All oh, right. Oh, uh, there's a couple of tickets for the divisional do tonight. Should be quite a shindig. A right, dance. A uh, dance? Who's up? What do you like? Good grief, Willis. They're actually having a thrash. Right. You go in with them. It's not exactly my scene. Why not? I prefer to keep my relationship with my colleagues strictly professional. How about you, woman? Dance. I'm amazed. I meant to say a dance. But I reckon after the verbal Bravo game, me divisional night out will be a block booking for Oedipus Rex. Uh, he likes a drink, that's all. You on? Yeah, we'll go. Don't think about it. Hello? Yes? Right. Yeah, lads. It's just up your street. <laughs> here's, the, here's the address. Only bicycles. Bad old motor, Sarge. How about Nobby? Him? For the motor. What? It ain't got a call sign, it ought to have a name. Nobby. Nobby Styles. You say, get Nobby. I know you want the motor. When I want the motor, I'll say, get the motor with us. Okay. Sorry about the job, Sarge. I think it's, it's degrading, Willis. Yeah, degrading. A mugged postman. No number. No. Opposite the church. And... No, it, it must be this house. All right. I'm on the routine roster. I don't mind getting my jacket off, but I've not come 200 miles to do duty for a police cadet. Right. What's the point about being sent on to common if it's work anyone can do? Right. It's a waste of the taxpayers' money. Right. We should be back in the smoke where the real crime goes on. Right. Mugged postman. Wasn't even duffed up. A postman with no house number. No number. No bell. And it's called Lionel Crooks. Yeah, he has to be, don't he? Um. Ah, Mr. Crooks. Yes, please. I was coming to see you. We've saved you the trouble, Mr. Crooks. Can we come in? Uh, place is a bit untidy. He won't mind.
the wife's dead. Gordon Bennett. The parlour. What have you got in the other room? Forklift truck. Calter, eh? You know, uh, skint merchandise. Fire damage. I go to auctions all over. Read the ads. Anything for Kelter, me. Lionel Crooks. Postman? Aye. Oh, this is just me fancy like. Better than rabbits. Oh, oh, talk to him, Willis, will you? Just get this straight, sir. As well as being a postman, you're a dealer, right? No. Well, what about... Fancy? This... Oh, it's just a pastime, like. Never know when outcomes in handy these days. Like uh, winter sports. Oh, that's the idea. Right, tell me about the mugging. Well, uh, where shall I begin? Uh, you won't want to know about the sorting. No. No. Uh, you won't want to know about Ladywell Road, a Brandon Road, a Ditchley. So I'll start at Burlack. Right now, I'm coming down Burlack towards cutting where waste is. Time? 7.30. 7.35. Beautiful morning. What's his name singing in the trees, you know. Grand. And suddenly, bonk. I'm confronted by this huge bloke wearing a balaclava all over his face. There's uh, bushes there? Yeah, bushes, trees. Waste, you know. Age, young. Man. Big. Colour. White man. Anyway, listen. This was the gimmick. He said, I want your bag, pal. And I said, no, you can't have it, mate. Or something like that. And he says, you'd better. Now, this was it. He turned into three, didn't he? What? Well, they were in. The big bloke in the balaclava. Mm -hmm. And then there were two lads, one at either side of me, wearing scarves like bandits. And you didn't see them come out of the bushes? No. Because they didn't come out. Independent. Well, they were stood behind him. I'll tell you where that shook. I let them take the bag from me. What could I do? Two lads. Yeah. Youngsters, teenagers, toughies. And they materialised just like that? No. I've worked it out. Good. Like this. Sure he didn't come out like that? That is the biggest load of fanny I've ever heard in my life, Crooks. You're a comedian. Straight up booker, is that? You lost Her Majesty's Mail. I think you gave it away. Do you like being a postman, Mr Crooks? Huh? Good money? Yeah, for a job on the side. You got receipts for all this lot? Oh, yeah. Log books for the bikes? Yeah. Mm, how about that one? Oh, no, that's applied for. Oh, yeah. Flood damage is that. Yeah. The documents washed away. Note the registration number, Willis. Oh, come on, it's kosher, is this? Would I let you in if I did anything to hide? I'm Sergeant Bullman of the Metropolitan Police, Sunshine. Not some wet-eared sniffer from traffic control. I don't believe there was a man and two lads. I don't even believe there were two lads. There weren't. There were three. I reported what happened, and that's what happened. Does the income tax know about this? The VAT, they'll gobble you up. Three lads. Kids. Yeah. Come out of the bushes. I, I was shook. They were on me before I knew what. Mm. Diligent and alert, eh? Stuff the job you're paid for. It's exchanging mart, isn't it? All this lot. I don't make much out of this, honest. You'd have to live off it if I had my way. Right. What registered mail did you have? Four. Oh, no, I think it was five. Well, I know I'd done two. Next was Mr Ward in Lucy Road. Right. Ward? Who were the other two? Don't remember. Oh, it'll be on the list. Well, how's it you remember Ward? Well, by Burlack. 97 Lucy Road. It's Wednesday. Wednesday? He gets a registered letter every Wednesday. Oh. How long's that been going on for? A year. Since I've been on the round. Every Wednesday? Yeah. Hmm. Right, well, that's all from us, uh, for the moment. How old were the kids? 16, 17. Sure. Fifteen? Well, you better go and correct your report, hadn't you? And you are a postman, eh? Entrusted with the custody of Her Majesty's mail. Aye. Right, another thing. They tried it once, so they'll try it again. So be alert, huh? Oh, aye. I will. Right, come on. Right, dress. One, two, three. Cord help us. Sly little grafter. <laughs> Goes on that round like a robot. No interest. Three little runners and he hands over his bag like a baby. Mm. Story of the country today, Willis. Do you make you want to spit? Yeah. Hey. 
get the Burlap Waste Willis straight to Lucy Road. I just made a connection. Mr. Ward, the man who gets a registered letter every Wednesday. Looking for Mr. Philip Ward. Next door, number 97. Uh, yeah, yeah, he is Lynn. I wonder if you could tell well, us... Well, wouldn't it be? It's van night. He plays corner. Uh, yes. Burlake Van Club. You wouldn't think it, but I'm trying to get there myself as it happens. Oh. I wish you'd change your mind. What about? Coming to the dance. Well, now, what could be that to me? Never know, you may meet the man of your dreams. Woohoo! Oh. Be very good from the PR point of view. You get to know all the other lads and lasses in the other departments. Drug squad, vice squad, special branch, and, and, and the uniform lads. I can hardly wait. You're still new around here. You ought to meet them. I mean, you never know when any one of them could be of use to you. Well, anyway, if you, if you don't go, they'll think you're being a bit toffee-nosed about them. You're a smooth-talking devil when you like, aren't you? <laughs> I got me moments. <laughs> You, you'll be along then. Oh, I doubt it, Sarge. I've got to meet this grass at eight o'clock about the whiskey case, and then I've got to type up a report the DI wants at first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm all home now. Any problems? I know, sir. Good. Well, I'll see you later at the do. Mm -hmm. Oh, you bring the wife, won't you? Oh, she's looking forward to it. <laughs> oh, that's going to be most enjoyable. You coming? Well, I'm hoping to, sir, but uh, there's that report you want typed up about the nicking of the whiskey. Oh, yeah, it's quite right. Business before pleasure every time. Oh, I meant to ask, how are Bullman and Willis getting on? Oh, I've put them on a case, sir. Mugged postman. <laughs> Just a job. Any results? Oh, I don't know. You're them phoned in. <laughs> I expect they're working overtime. Come on, Willis. Stop dawdling. Go on, get in. We know he plays the corner. Yeah, I don't know the difference. You just want to beat that police dance, don't you? Well, what's wrong Look, with this? That? Is great music here, wonderful sounds, and I'm doing you a favour. That Miss Doran, she's not in your class. She's not going, is she? Okay. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. And now, for your pleasure, before a short break, we have our cornetist Philip Ward with a solo of Harry Mortimer's immortalised trumpet voluntary. Thank you. I know that face. Driving me mad. Thank you. 
Guests usually give a pound. Oh, oh yeah. Hmm? Where did you work? Uh, music teacher at Comprehensive. Ah, oh. oh. oh, great. <laughs> Uh, what, uh, uh, Burlak, is it? No, Lady Well. It's very good, too. Always welcome. I'm pasting with this. His name's not Ward, it's Wayland. Philip Wayland. The Philip Wayland Trio. Yeah. Cello, oboe, and cornet. Caused quite a vibrato in their time. Very high tone, uh, smash and grab outfit, uh, working their way through college. Stephen Naylor nicked them. And I remember the uh, cello drove the motor, the oboe sledged the window, and the cornet grabbed the tomfoolery. <laughs> Go on! All very successful little concert, something like 20 capers taken in consideration. Soft charge, only give them three years, but half the blame on Stu Grants. School teacher, and he gets a registered letter every Wednesday. Hmm. Tell you what. What? Get back to the station and give uh, Naylor a ring at the yard. Find out all the details about that, especially if all the loot was recovered. Look, are you sure we should be interfering, sir? We are meant to be investigating a mug post. From Little Acorns, Willis. But we've been told to keep our noses clean. Phone me at the hotel. OK, sir. From the station. Take Nobby. What? The motor. I'm going to stay here and put the frighteners on. Yeah, well, be careful, sir. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> Uh, you know, Sir Harry wouldn't have played it better. Well, that's right, thirsty, no. weren't that? Or oh, get him a pint, somebody. Pint for Philip. All <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. That's the highlight of our competition test piece. Eh, hey, John? It's that, with Rose of Tralee. <laughs> oh, you found it then, love? Oh, yeah. yeah no. He'd come round asking for Philip while I were washing my hair. Oh, I'm still up to sight. No, no, you look smashing well. Hello, Maestro. Detective Sergeant Stephen Naylor sends his regards. Oh, that's nice of him. Darling, get my friend a drink, will you? What do you have? Oh, I'll have a half of uh, Nigerian lager. Uh, McGinty's down for. Yeah. <laughs> half a pint of draft in the door. What does he want, then? I don't know yet, but I'm sure he'll manage a few questions. I know you, don't I? I'll give him a hand. You and me, we had a chat, remember? Sergeant Bullman. I'm very flattered, Mr. Wayland. Look, that Wayland business is three years gone, Bullman. I live here. I'm rehabilitated now. I'm part of the community, all Excuse right? Excuse me. In two, Philip. Will's taking your alien. Yeah, I'll be there. I work hard, and I'm appreciated. You've got a nice little house. And I've got a lot of influential friends. They wouldn't like you getting on my back, Bullman. They might call it witch hunting. You know what I mean? Ah, oh, thank you, Alan. Ah, oh, thank you, Master. Well, it's nice to see you again. Oh, I'll be around for a bit. Good. Let's go in. I didn't know you were a friend of Philip. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should have told me, man. I want to stung you for the quid. <laughs> well, in that case, you think I could... Oh, do you know, I do feel awful being sinarchular. Hmm? Only I didn't want to miss his voluntary. We've heard so much about it. Yeah. yeah, still not dry neither. That's why I'm wearing this abortion. Excuse my French. Uh, would you like a drink? Oh, no. No, nothing for me, thanks. I'll go and have a short. We can listen to the music from here. Oh, all right. I'll have um, a gin and pear note. It's lovely, is that? Have you known Philip for long? Oh, a few years. Uh, gin and pear note, please. But I haven't seen him for quite a while, you know. Oh, well, you'll just have met his fiancée, Barbara, then. Oh, yeah, very attractive, yeah. Oh, she's a lovely girl. Mm. She's just right for Philip. Mm. Very cultured, very musical. And, of course, her father's very well-to-do, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Roy Kershaw. Yeah. yeah, he's one of the biggest contractors in the area. Kershaw. House like a five-star yeah. hotel. Kidney-shaped yeah. swimming oh, pool. Uh, hang on. Uh, oh. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Can you hold on a moment, Willis? Yeah, I'll hold. Hello, Willis? Yeah. No, they apparently never recovered the loot from at least three of the jobs. 
I hope this will be of use to you. Yeah, very useful. Thanks, Sergeant Naylor. I'll give my best to the lads. OK. Cheerio, then. Yeah, cheers. ta -da. Hello. Mr. Bullman, sir. Yes. Telephone. Right, hang on. After you. Thank you. Hello. Hello, oh, Sarge. Yeah. I got hold of them. Sergeant Naylor. Yeah. And it's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, listen. Hello, Willis. Thought you were going to the dance. I got tied up. What? Uh, yeah, hang on a second, sir. What changed your mind? Do you fancy cruising? Cruising? No, I just thought I should get to know the natives, that's all. Well, what's going on? Who are you talking to? I'll just lend her time. Well, what's she doing now? I don't know, Sarge. She keeps following me about. She's got this amazing dress on, Sarge. Cut right down to her knee. Look, you're supposed to be working, Willis. Yes, Sarge. Naylor said they'd never recovered the loot from at least three jobs. Did he now? Right. Well done. Is, uh, is that all, Sarge? Certainly. You're a good little kicker, Derek. And, uh, now can I go to the dance, Sarge? You shall go to the ball, Derek. And look, um, not for your sake, not for her sake, but just for my sake. Do try not to get too smashed. I might need you tomorrow. Oh, you got a light, son? Yeah, I'll get... You cheeky beggar. Sir, Mr. Bowman, sir. Uh, yes, Mr. Robinson, sir. You was cooking in your bedroom, wasn't you? Cooking is forbidden, so why should I be cooking? Because I ate sizzling. Sizzling? What sort of sizzling? Bacon or sausages. Chips? Could be. Oh, it was on my radio. Come off it, Mr. Bowman. I'm not bloody daft. I smelled it, sir, and it were bacon. Smelled? When you opened that door there. You smelled nothing, Mr. Robinson, sir, except the whole aroma of this establishment because it stinks. And unless you freshen it up, sunshine, I'm going to report you to the local Chamber of Commerce for running a commercial hotel pervaded with the odour of frying bacon. Good night, old chap. Better paid job than mine, Sarge. Amazing overtime. I know this geezer, Taff. You met him. Drinks in the Cardinal. Always there. Little bloke. Talks to Jack the Act. Rides a sports bike. Real L fanatic. Now he works 188 hour week. You're still pissed, Willis. Technically, you figured it out, Sarge. It's a 26 hour day. You've got night shift, double time, overtime, triple time hours in lieu. He's got his shift so worked oh. out he's working while he's sleeping. Right. He's working while he's well, drinking in the Cardinal. Out, sir. Right. The four registered letters named in addresses. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the end of the ward letters. W. Wordsworth, 14 Draymore Road. It's always the same, always the same post office. Right, with you. He was in the flat first, 27 Eaton Avenue. Mm -hmm. Then nine months ago, he moved to the house in Lucy Road. Right. Can I look at your registered records? I'm sorry, Sergeant. You need special permission. It's confidential. Yeah, all right. Well, you've been very helpful, sir. Crook said he'd give him a bit of the hard word. Well, hardly, seeing he was lying through his teeth. Reckon he's a fly one, that. He stretches it a bit far sometimes. What way? Absenteeism. Oh. On the sick when there's an auction. He knows he's got to watch his step now. Right. We'll let you know if anything crops up. Perhaps your lads can keep an eye on Burleck at round times. Yes. Even if they are only kids, it's nasty. And we don't want it to escalate. Yeah, right. Give us your bag, mister. Come on, we're not gonna hurt you. It's like yesterday. Okay. Here you are, then. Save it, little suds! Christ. Right, how's it going? 
Address doesn't exist, sir. Words with W. No, I know. He's a daffodil poet, Willis. I know that. I'm ahead of you. Seems crackers. Senders giving false names on registered letters. But it's common practice. There's got to be a story behind every registered letter. Look. Get onto the London office, speak to the postmaster there, and be nice and polite. Ask him about any character who buys a registered letter every Tuesday. I'm ahead of you, Sarge. He's asking around his clerks now. What were you drinking last night? Distilled garlic? Sorry, Sarge. Right, when you find Ward's estate agent, I want you to ask when bought, who paid, how much, method of payment. Then take yourself down there, find out anything else you can. Mortgage details, solicitors, salary declared, our addresses, name on contract, the lot. Is that a request or an order, Sergeant? Of course, it's an order. Well, when I finish typing up my report for the DI, I'll see if I can fit it in. Right. I'm off another chat with the maestro. Yeah, good luck, Sergeant. Boar. Willis, how do you work with him? He's all right beneath that granite exterior. Does he not cramp your style? No. Well, not often. He gives me the hump. Yeah, but he gets results, connections. He says detective works like mathematics, a matter of connections. I mean, this style out was a routine mugging case. But you've no rights to carry this. That copper said if they got away once, they'd likely do it again. But it's an offensive weapon, Crooks. It's a Gestapo relic. I was defending Her Majesty's mail. That is my duty. It is, and it's a difficult situation, but the law says you don't carry weapons. That's how it stands. You've injured a young lad. Yesterday, I mugged, right? And they take me bag away. Now, I were caught by surprise. It were three to one. Kids, you shout at them. The vicious. All right, all right. Then these London scuppers come around putting the bull's hoof right on my head. Here. Yeah. Prying into my private life. Accusing me of everything from receiving to dereliction of duty. He told me I was a bad postman. You are, but that's nothing to do with him. No, we were blaming me. So I said to him, I said, uh, Do you think I should have had a go then, sir? And he said, now, these are his very words, Mr. Walters, he said, you do whatever you've got to do to defend Her Majesty's mail. That is your duty. Write out a report and include your conversation with the policeman. All right. Thank you, Mr. Walters. Oh, uh, that's another thing. I did think of taking evasive action, but after what he said about them getting away with it... Just write out your report, Crooks. I'll have a word with the police and see what we can sort out. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Walters. Close the door. Well, I'm never it's you again. <laughs> you won't find him in. He doesn't come back home after band night. Stays with his fiance. She's got a luxury flat in town. Oh, yes. You know, it's funny. I was just thinking about you. <laughs> you never told me your name. George. It's what? George. Oh. Fancy a cup of coffee, George? Okay. No thanks. So. Oh, go on. Be a devil. Live now, pay later. No, I've, I've got, got to go. Do you know what? I think there's something mysterious about you. No. Well, you don't want to worry what the neighbours think. They're all rubbish. I don't give a knot. No, I just popped in on the off chance. I've got to go to work, really. Oh. Okay, don't. Well, call in sometime when you don't have to work. Yeah. The old fellow don't come in for his tea while five. Yeah. Yes, OK, yes, thank you very much, Mr. Wiggins. Indeed, yes, I'll try, Mr. Dollar. Yeah. OK, bye-bye. And you. Where's Sergeant Baldwin? Don't know, Sergeant. Willis. Out, Sarge. On inquiry. What? Registered letters. Sarge. Registered letters? Yeah. I never told him to investigate registered letters. It arose out of the mugging case, Sarge. Remember, wants to see him as soon as he gets back. 
Yes, Sarge. They've caught one of your muggers. Yeah? Yeah. You want me to do the honours, Sarge? Not unless you're a brain surgeon. He's in the infirmary. The postman you talked to yesterday cracked the boy's skull with a loaded truncheon. Quite frankly, I wouldn't like to see anything go wrong for him. Meaning, sir? I'm sure you know very well what I mean, Sergeant. Just take my word that everything is above board. Let's leave it like that, shall we? I can't, sir. Ward came to see me with excellent musical qualifications. We have a musical tradition here. I took him on, and he's bloody good. As Ward, sir. Sergeant Bullman, he has been to prison. That should be the end of it. Obviously, he behaved very stupidly in the past. He can't go on paying for it for the rest of his life, surely. Two cases of robbery with violence. Twinkling known smashing grabs. Stupid. That's a rather charitable view, sir. Some would say that he's a hard young villain. Four years ago, he was discharged from prison and he went to Bristol. He couldn't hold a job. He had to get out. Why? Because everywhere he turned, the police were at him. Exactly the same thing happened in Wolverhampton. Can you blame him for coming up here with a new name? Why can't you give him a chance? All right, let's just take his last job as a jewellery shop in Brighton. Our musical team does 60 grand in loot. It's still missing. That's why the police are keeping tabs on all of them. We're just going to recover it, that's all. Has he given any indication of spending that kind of money? You should know that, sir. But I haven't seen it. No, oh, we're checking on it. But shouldn't you have firm evidence before causing this kind of trouble? Trouble, sir. As far as I'm concerned, Philip Ward has completely rehabilitated himself. It's a pity he can't do it more openly. I mean, here's a young man with approved pressure for crime, right? He's working his way up in the community. He's got a car, a pretty house, a rich fiance, and an assumed name. Now, what am I to assume from that? I didn't think the police assumed anything. I suppose his future father-in-law knows about his form. That is hardly your business, Sergeant. But it's hardly my business either that a convicted felon is teaching kids their lessons. It isn't. I suppose the local education authority has all the details. I would think that was their business. That is impertinent, Sergeant. Sorry, sir. Just like everything to be above board. Now, I might have that checked with Wayland. My advice to him will be to see a solicitor. Thank you, madam, yes. Mrs. Waylands. Yes, I got that. Thank you. Well, that was the uh, post office in London. It appears that Mrs. Wordsworth and Mrs. Waylands are the same person. Now, just what the hell are you and Bullman paying at? Just pursuing our investigation, sir. Well, it's, it's not good enough. It's not good enough at all. First, you incite a postman to GBH, and, and now you're messing about in things that don't concern you. Just wait till I get my hands on Bullman. My mother. Yes, sir. I bought a house on a mortgage. I'm saving to get married. She helps me, that's all. Wordsworth to Ward. Assume names seem to be a family trait. It's also a false address. Now, what do you think the reason for that would be, sir? I thought a cheque or a post order would have been more convenient. Can you tell me how much it is? Look, she doesn't want it known she sent it, all right? All right, we'll check with her. Oh, God, you don't have to do that. Sergeant, look, don't as you I that... told you, we're trying to recover 60 grand, all right? All right, look. My family aren't badly off, but my father has nothing to do with me since the business. So my mother helps me. Six pounds a week. If you must know, it's part of her pension money. She does it like this so my father won't know. And if you go around asking questions, you'll find out and it'll be very embarrassing for her. Her old age pension? Yes. Look, lay off me, will you? I don't know what's happened to that gear. I didn't see it after the raid. Is that all? Yes. Look, for the moment, sir. Oh, Christ. Don't worry, Philip. Just a word, Sergeant. You're new here, aren't you? Yes, I kind of on assignment from the Met, sir. Well, as a member of the Watch Committee, I commend your diligence, Sergeant. Just trying to do my job, sir, that's all. Yes, but there's a difference between investigation and muckraking, Sergeant. Who's your chief, Inspector Rainbow? Inspector Rainbow is my inspector, sir. Superintendent Sims is my chief. Oh, yes, I see. Thank you. Well, good day. 
Good day, sir. Let's talk about fighting man. Oh. Rainbow. He's changing colour. Yeah, well, that postman's a bloody liar for a start, Sarge. We never told him to carry a weapon. We never told him to have a go. I'll tell you what, I'll have him. You do. And you'll be out. I'll never talk like that in the office again. Understood? Sorry, Sarge. We're going down to the pub. Okay, Sarge. Yeah, spread the dirt with the other skippers. He's not like that. I don't know. He's just fed up with you and your bulldozing methods. They get results. Yeah, but at what cost? I mean, I'm supposed to be working with you and ferret fingers. Look, Willis, this whole deal means a lot to me. I'm not going to let you muck it up. Oh, well, I suppose the kid's off the danger list. I suppose that's something. Yeah, that's something. It's just all turned over. There has to be something fishy about Wayland. Yes, well, he put 3,000 quid down on that house. Now, that's not bad in a teacher's salary. But then again... Where's your evidence, ma'am? You may be right. What you say, he smells. What can we do? You've trampled all over it. I was brought up here to do a grown man's job, sir. I was sent here to be a stranger in town, a face I didn't recognise. Large-scale jobs, not mugged postmen. It just happened to develop into something more serious, the recovery of stolen property. Now, you know, and I know, that he's guilty. I'm convinced that Wayland has taken us all for a ride. You and I may be convinced, Bullman, but where's the proof? I will not have freelance kicking on my patch. Never had it before, and I'm not having it now. What might be acceptable down south is not necessarily acceptable here, on my territory, in my division. Take that as a caveat, a warning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir! That headmaster is one of the most influential men in the county. You presented yourself as a vindictive officer who's victimising a man for his past. I've been straight, sir. I've done nothing that isn't in the book. You tried to nail a man on flim-flam. Registered letters from his old mum. Finish. And it's an official apology down to me. Thank you very much. Now, all we've got left is a mugging that's turned into GBH. He is a shyster, sir. Bullman. Can you give me the serial numbers? You'll be on a milk diet soon. Uh-huh. Ulcers. Slow down. Shh. Six. Yeah. I knew an inspector once. He used to have to have his large scotches in a pint of milk. Disgusting. That's terrific. Thanks very much. Yeah, bye. All work and no play, eh? Look, Willis, this might all be a wee bit of a giggle to you, but I happen to take my job seriously. That's about the most pompous remark I've heard this week. Fancy a drink? No, thank you. I'm going out as soon as I finish this. Who with? By myself, to a lecture on urban terrorism. Great. Never learn that rainbow, will you? You back on the beat, then? Uh, they got some funny idea up here about treating villains like human beings. It's not a bad idea for starters, Sergeant. Maybe you should think about it. What's wrong with her? Time of the month, is it? A case of terminal dedication. <laughs> dedication. That's my problem, isn't it? Got too much of it. Oh, I should have packed it all in and come to the dance. What was it like? A bit naff. Uh-huh. Do you know they still did a twist? <laughs> and their wives so me. Oh, right, well, there you go. I know I'm right about that Wayland, though. I'm sure you are. I'll buy you a drink because I want to tell you something. Make it good, Willis. Chickens come home to roost. <laughs> Too right, cock. Meanwhile, I've got two enforced days off to write Lord Chief Justice Rainbow's essay, Tractus de Legibus et Rhubarb and Cobblers. The crown and flower of English litigation. I call it law, Willis. I call it law. 